there, my name is Emma and I am an artist and DIYer. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This is my debut video, my first video ever on this channel. I'm so excited to start to share more of my artistic process, my DIYs, my renovations, everything that I'm doing on here. And let's just get right into the video. For this video, we are going to be doing a charcuterie board Halloween costume. I was so proud of this idea. I couldn't stop thinking about it. I haven't seen anyone else do it. I love kind of the brunch theme. My initial goal was to have me be a charcuterie board, my boyfriend to be a mimosa or champagne, and then my dog Benny slash Benedict to be eggs Benedict for kind of an overall brunch theme. I might just be a charcuterie board. I might change my mind to do a totally different costume altogether, but I think it could be a really fun group costume to be a bunch of different elements of brunch. But for this particular video, I'll be focusing on just the charcuterie board costume, which was actually pretty easy to make. You might need just a slight bit of painting experience, but I'm gonna try to show you every single step in detail to kind of help you along create this charcuterie board costume. So pretty much all of my supplies I got from Dollar Tree. I ended up spending only $8 at Dollar Tree, but keep in mind, I do have some spray paint and regular paint. I didn't use a ton of colors of paint. I know you can also get paint at Dollar Tree. And then I did use one thing of Rust-Oleum khaki spray paint, which is kind of uh, the perfect rattan color. This is actually spray painted in Rust-Oleum khaki spray paint. So there's an example of it. I already had some to spray paint my crackers, but you can get that. I think it's probably four or $5 at Home Depot, Lowe's, Ace, anywhere like that, or probably a craft store as well. So let me go over to the supplies a little bit. The first thing I got was two pieces of foam that's actually floral foam. They were rectangles. Again, everything was from Dollar Tree, so it was a dollar. So I used those to make my strawberries and then also my blue cheese. Of course, I had my foam board, which was the actual charcuterie board itself that I painted with a wood grain. That cost a dollar as well. I also got two foam circles. They ended up, when I opened them, um, being like two packs each. So it's kind of four, but they each cost a dollar. I also got a loofah sort of sponge thing, which was another type of cheese of mine. I got ping pong balls, which had little eyeballs on them. If there's anything I would change, I would add or get some red spray paint to paint those as tomatoes, or you can make them into grapes or something else. I have a lot of red on my board, so if you wanna mix it up and get more colors. I ended up using an orange spray paint that I already had to give them a base coat so the red wouldn't show through as much, or the white wouldn't show through as much. Finally, I got some berries. That's just what they had. If you have anything that kind of looks like fruit, I think it adds a nice element. It's kind of realistic. I could envision it being on a real charcuterie board just as like a little bit of decor. Maybe it's like a huckleberry or something. I don't know, but that is it. That totals about $9. So under $10 for this. Again, I have my own paints and a few supplies like the hot glue gun, but this is a really cheap DIY and I got everything from Dollar Tree. So let's start with the wood. My favorite thing ever is that you can make anything look like wood with a cheap brush. You can also get a brush at Dollar Tree if you don't have a big like chip brush. Honestly, the worse quality of the brush, the better, and probably the bigger, the better. You want kind of a rough brush that's gonna give you a lot of that wood grain texture. I used some brown paint and some water. I happened to have a palette that I was working with where I accidentally got some reds and some blacks in there. So if you see that happening, that was totally an accident, but it worked. You do want to water it down and kind of use it like a stain where you're using multiple coats. So the key to this is you're going to get a little bit on your brush. You're just going to smooth it back and forth across. If you really want to be fancy and have a little bit more of a wood grain, you will kind of twist your brush as you're going or you're going to go straight kind of go up and then <laughs> go straight again and go down and that's going to look like a little uh not in the wood but for this project it's not completely necessary because it's going to be covered up for the most part i did at the end cut the edges and i'll show that in a little and paint the edges which um, i will talk about later but i at first uh, planned everything, glued everything, and then at the end, um, based on the shape, I'm gonna cut the edges. So we'll get to that later. So that is it for the wood. You just want to keep layering and layering until you find a coat that's the color you want. Um, again, feel free to experiment, and I'm using all acrylic paints in this. So you're just gonna go back and forth, back and forth until you find 
a green mat looks like wood to you. So I took some floral foam, took a box cutter, I took the box cutter out, I sliced a few pieces of the foam to make it look like it was sliced cheese. Now if you want to just skip the blue cheese and do maybe like a cheddar or something, paint it with some whites and oranges, that's totally fine, but I thought it would be fun to do blue cheese. I really like blue cheese, but if you're a blue cheese hater, you don't have to include it. But what I did is I took some white, brown, some burnt umber, I believe. Yeah, I don't think it was Ross yet. I think it was burnt umber, which is kind of like a dark yellow. Essentially, you just want like a dark yellow. And I mixed those together and I covered everything with that. And then to make it a look a little bit more aged, I did take some more of that yellow and some brown and took it around the edges while it was still wet and blended it in just to give it kind of that aged look like the outside had been sitting there for a while. I tried to make it a look a little bit more realistic. While it was still wet, I mixed a little bit of uh, like a cobalt blue and black and I took a really small brush and I tapped it on there. I even mixed it with some of that base coat a little bit at first to just get some subtle blues, some subtle blues and blacks and tapped it all around in these little spots. You want it to just kind of be a tiny bit throughout. And then I wiped my brush off and got some more concrete black and blue, um, some solid black and blue, and I tapped that on top of all the little spots to give two dimensions of shading if that makes sense. Hopefully, as you're watching this video and watching me do it, it kind of starts to make sense. Brie cheese ended up being my favorite. I'm most proud of it. As I said before, I didn't realize that the foam was going to be two pieces, so I initially was planning on doing two separate blocks of brie cheese, but I ended up gluing it back together to make a little bit more realistic of a size. This cheese has a little bit more of a bright yellow in it. So the other one has that dark yellow. This one has more of a bright yellow and white, but it still has those hints of a more muted yellow. So I mixed white, some bright yellow, and a little bit of that, I think it was burnt umber. I'm not sure, I'll put all the colors in the description to help you out. I should really look it up, but. Ideally for all of these cheeses, you'll be way more patient than me and let parts dry before doing anything else. That was my biggest, the, the hardest part of this was waiting for everything to dry because when you're painting on foam, it gets in all those little crevices. So it takes a really long time to dry because you have a bunch of clumps of paint. So ideally you'll kind of give the edges that light yellow tone, you'll wait for it to dry. And then I would add glue to the top and I just took white tissue paper, I folded it in half and I glued it on the top. I kind of cut the excess off the edges and then folded it down. I feel like Brie, the most signature element of it, other than the color, is kind of those ridges. The color and the texture in combination with each other really make it look like Brie. So I just folded the edges. I think on some of them I taped it and some of them I hot glued it, but you just want to adhere it because you got to keep in mind that on all of these, the bottoms won't be showing for the most part. So you don't have to worry about that too much. So I just glued the top on, folded the edges, and then glued the bottom on. And I think it looks like some pretty darn good brie cheese. The easiest cheese was the loofah slash sponge. I just cut the edge off and then I cut a chunk out of it. This was super easy. If you want to do more of these and maybe spray paint them different colors, I think that would be a really successful cheese plate if you don't want to deal with hand painting stuff as much. It's kind of like a Swiss cheese maybe. Not sure about the coloring, but I definitely think it gives off realistic cheese vibes. And of course we have my favorite cheese, not necessarily looks wise, but in real life. I love me some smoked Gouda. So I had to include it in my charcuterie board if I was gonna make it realistic for me. I just cut up those foam boards into little slices. Um, I cut them in half first, and then I cut them to, into a bunch of little triangles. And then I used a similar color for the brie, which was that white, that bright yellow, and the raw sienna. I mixed those together, and I didn't know how I wanted to align it at first, so at first I didn't paint all of the correct sides, but you wanna paint one side and then the top and the bottom, the biggest surface areas, if that makes sense. You might as well just paint the whole thing. You don't wanna to have to think about it too much. And then I took kind of a copper color and a brown and I painted those edges. If you Google smoked Gouda, it has a bunch of different colors of that like coating on the outside edge. So just do whatever works for you. Again, I took brown and like a, an orangey copper color, mix those together, and then I just painted that outside edge. And I think it turned out really well. I tried to kind of build up a crust as I was painting it. So from any given side, you could kind of see that little brown edge. 
but yeah again the hardest part was waiting for it to dry you will get paint all over your hands if you do it like me as you can see in all of the videos i am completely covered in paint because i kept not waiting for it to dry and you can kind of see it mixing together be patient wait for it to dry none of these took very long probably because I didn't leave any drying time, but um, this ended up being a pretty simple project. Now, the strawberries were probably the hardest part if you have no painting experience. So before I get into what I did, I'm gonna tell you an alternative, which would be Googling strawberry slices and then printing out however many you want of the kind of cut section of the strawberry slice and then gluing those to the foam and then cutting around it or cutting up foam and then gluing it and then maybe painting the edges red. So you don't actually have to paint the strawberry. I think that would be great if you want it to be a little bit more realistic because mine obviously are painting, so they're not super, super realistic. So if you're not comfortable painting, honestly, you could probably look up a blue cheese texture too. But if you want to get super realistic strawberries and make your life a little easier, you can just print them out, cut out the foam and glue them on. So what I did is I sketched out some strawberry slices on my foam. The cross section of a strawberry is kind of like a heart, but instead of really having that bulk on the outside, it kind of um, is a little bit flatter. So it's a little triangle, a little bit flatter, kind of like a bladder longer maybe so just try a few times honestly you don't have to get it perfect it's still gonna register in people's brains as a strawberry even if the shape isn't perfect and again even if you want to try painting it maybe you can print out a slice and then kind of trace the shape so you don't have to guess on the shape the first thing I did is I cut a bunch of slices just like I did with the blue cheese and then I traced my strawberries on there. I cut them out with scissors and then the floral foam is really, really easy to work with. It's super satisfying, it's super messy, but um, you can actually just use your fingers to rub the edges, rub any funkiness out. It's really soft and malleable. I guess the negative side is that it is very delicate, but once you get a coating of paint on there, acrylic paint is liquid plastic. So it's really gonna harden it up and make it a lot more durable for you to use and move around as you're working with it. But once you get all of those edges smoothed out the way you want them, I gave all of them a coat of red. You wanna make sure this red has a little bit more tones of orange in it. When I was first doing it, um, I just realized it, it wasn't looking like a strawberry and it was because it was more of a magenta red. So you wanna try to find a red that's more of like a rusty orange red. It's got definitely some orange tones in it. So I gave it a coat of red and then while it was still wet, I took a little bit of white and smeared that in the middle because the edge is gonna be the darkest color and then there's gonna be some lightness coming from the middle. Ideally you wait for that to dry, but did I do that? No, I did not. <laughs> I just went ahead and went into the next steps, which is painting kind of that, that little indent if you were coring a strawberry that you would take out. There's like a little white U shape at the top and then almost an upside down pair if you can imagine that it's like a big circle and a little circle connected so it's a pear shape coming out of the top of that filled in U, and that's going to be kind of the core for your general strawberry shape and then out of that pear shape you're going to do a bunch of little tiny lines you're always going to start on the inside where the pear shape is and flick your brush out and you're going to do all of these in white it may look like i'm not <laughs> working with white because i had a lot of pink mixed in there because i didn't wait for it to dry yet again but you do want to work with white and have that pear shape the u shape and all the lines coming out from it in white. Up next we have the tomatoes which were the bane of my existence. <laughs> if I were to do this again, although I think they look great, maybe I wouldn't do them, maybe I would turn them into something else. I don't know what else could be that small shape, but I, I went with cherry tomatoes. I took ping pong balls which had eyeballs on them which was a challenge and um, at first I started painting them with red acrylic paint and it was taking so many coats to cover up and I realized I had some orange spray paint that I could use to kind of cover up some of the brightness of the white. So it only took one or two coats of red spray paint. This was so messy, especially because I had foam crumbles everywhere. So I kept dropping the tomatoes and they would roll and get crumbs all over them. It was a mess. At some point I even tried to take the ping pong ball and stick a needle in it and so I could kind of hold the needle and paint. It would fall off. It was, it was just pretty chaotic. So this was definitely the hardest step 
honestly, it might be worth it now that I'm thinking of it to take like a piece of cardboard, hot glue them all down so they don't move and then paint them and then just remove the cardboard because the bottom's not gonna be showing anyway. That might be the easiest way. That is not how I did it. I just struggled with them rolling all over the place the whole time and it was not pretty. It was super frustrating, I'm not gonna lie. Also, I already had some green paper from another project, so I was able to create the little stems from them. Pretty much it was just a bunch of U shapes in a star. You probably could have drawn a star and then cut out from point to point in U shapes. They have these really long kind of uh, stems coming out of the top. I don't know if stems the right word, but you just want to cut out these U shapes in a star. And then I hot glued those to the top. I took some strips and I rolled them up glued them and then I cut them into tiny sections to make like little tiny stems to come out of the middle to give it a little bit more dimension. You're just going to glue that right on top of the stem. It ended up being kind of flat so you kind of want to cut against the flatness to make it a little bit rounder or just roll it with your hands to make it rounder but this is not totally necessary. You don't have to have green paper. You can paint paper green paint a whole piece of paper green, probably front and back, and then cut it all out and do what I did, but um, totally up to you. Or you could just not do the tomatoes in general because they were awful. <laughs> up to you. The crackers have to be my most brilliant thing I have ever come up with. I'm super proud of them. I kind of laid them out in ways that I thought maybe I would want them. Kind of art shapes, something that would go around the cheese as well. And at the end, I kind of adjusted them a little bit, but I found it was easier to lay them out first. And then I took Rust-Oleum paint in the color khaki. Rust-Oleum? Khaki by Rust-Oleum. <laughs> but pretty much once they were sprayed, they really stuck together. These suckers did not want to move. Um, they had some fuzzies on them that I had to cut off, but I just kind of arranged them on the plate once they were dry and it worked really well. I just took a big streak of glue and glued them all down and they're not going anywhere. They're super, super light. Once I had everything done, I hot glued it all together. This did take quite a bit of hot glue. I already had it arranged how I wanted it. I laid it all down there, messed around, moved it around a little bit. And then once I was happy with how it looked, I glued the big pieces down. And the last thing I glued or tried to glue on each was strawberries and tomatoes because those are kind of filler pieces. I did end up cutting some of the edges. I don't remember if it was before or after I glued everything down to give the wood some rounded edges. And then I painted the actual physical side of the foam. Now, if you want to be nice and professional, you would paint the back side of the foam as well. I did not. You're just going to cut the edges to give it that rounded look. I feel like most cutting boards have rounded edges rather than harsh square edges at least wood cutting boards do. And I just glued, I went, I went ham. This was the best part because I really got to see everything coming together. It was super satisfying. For some of the pieces that were stacked on top of each other, I glued the stacks together first and then I glued them to the wood. Don't be worried if you're using hot glue and it starts to fizzle on the foam. It's melting the foam, that's totally fine. Everything is really adhered on there for mine. Don't worry about it too much, just use a lot of glue, stick it on there. Some of it will kind of get eaten up, but for the most part, because everything is so light, it's still gonna be really stuck on there. Now, I wouldn't recommend running a marathon in this, but for a night of Halloween, it will be totally fine. The very last thing you're gonna wanna do is you are going to want to put two holes for your neck. I measured across my foam and it was 20 inches, so I made a mark at 17 and a mark at 14, and I took an X-Acto knife and I stuck it through and then rotated it in a circle, which created circles, and then I just took macrame cord. You can use yarn, anything you want, but I took macrame cord and I put it through the front and tied knots in the back. It's nice because it's adjustable. The first length I did, I wanted it to be a little bit higher, and you can wear whatever you want under this. That's also the best part, because you can go, you know, whatever, style of Halloween you like to do. But yeah, I just knotted the macrame. I'm able to slip it over my neck. And the best part is this is only 10 ounces. This is super, super lightweight. When I showed my mom and my sister, my sister was immediately like, no one's gonna wanna do that, it's super heavy. But it is only 10 ounces. That's probably the same weight as both of my phones and my keys in my normal apron. It's really lightweight. It didn't feel like too much on my neck. 
Um, eventually you might get tired of wearing it, but just wear a cute outfit underneath and, you know, maybe give it away at the end of the night if you're tired of wearing it. Make new friends, give away your charcuterie board. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to DM me on Instagram. I respond pretty well over there. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe. I'll be doing a ton more costumes. And if there's anything you wanna see, please let me know. Feel free to leave a comment. Again, DM me. I am happy to do requests. Thank you so, so much for your time. I cannot wait to be a part of this YouTube community. I'm so, so excited and have a good one. Happy making.